when, when somebody has a, gets a mercury filling, how long does that affect them? Is, does, it, does it decrease over time? If someone has it for 70, 80 years, are they still being affected by that? Is it still getting into the system or does it after a while just kind of slowly stop? Um, would be nice if it would stop, but no, it, it actually continues to, the, there's huge amounts of exposure the day it's placed. And so mm -hmm. uh, that's called a bolus dose. It's this, you know, like a pow, mm -hmm. hits your immune system with a, just a ton of mercury that day. And that also can happen if they're not removed carefully. You don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. But what happens after that is the amount of release drops off, but it never goes to zero. And every time you chew on it after that, or stimulate it with a toothbrush, or hot coffee, any kind of stimulation makes the mercury start come off again. Mm -hmm. And then it stays coming off for about an hour, and an hour and a half later it's dropped back down, and then you have something else to eat. And, then, and so you're on this roller coaster of little puffs of mercury coming off the filling. It's not constant, but you can just take a, a mercury filling, a brand new mercury filling, make it up, set it in a drawer, let it sit for three months. We wish we could do that with our own teeth. Mm -hmm. And then put it in a little glass of water and measure the amount of mercury that comes off in, at room temperature in a glass of water. And it exceeds the EPA standard for us daily from one filling in a glass of water. So the mm -hmm. likelihood you're not getting exposed to a lot more than that because you're brushing, chewing, especially mm -hmm. hot pizza, hot coffee and stuff like that. The, the guy that figured out the heat thing was uh, Carl Savari. He was, he was measuring the breath of dental students, and uh, he was getting low numbers. And the girl at the end of the line, she was going like, uh, this is taking, uh, 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 uh. And so she left, and she went across the street and got a pizza. And had lunch, and finished up lunch, and picked up the box, and didn't quite finish all the pizza. And she went back across the street, and Dr. Savari's door was closed, so she knocked on it. And, Carl came to the door and she said, need another student? He said, oh yeah, I just finished the last one. And she went right in and he went to measure her breath and she, her breath was so high in mercury it ruined his equipment. And he said, whoa, what do you do? And she said, I went over and ate a pizza. And he said, oh gee, it must be mercury in the pizza. And they actually ground up the pizza and measured the mercury, no mercury in the pizza. And then they measured her breath again and after he reconstituted, he was doing gastrochromatography and reconstituted, and it was still high, but it was coming down. And then they waited another hour, and it went a little down lower. And he says, oh, what else was she doing? Chewing, maybe. And so mm -hmm. he cut a little piece of rubber uh, tubing off, and he said, chew this up. And so she chewed it up, and he measured her breath again, and it went right back up. Mm -hmm. So, stimulation. That's called mm -hmm. the 1981 chewing gum study. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he called all those other people back, had them chew gum, <laughs> and they found nice high levels. Okay. So, or levels that would cause the EPA to evacuate mm -hmm. the city. Mm -hmm.